everybody, I'm Aya Kamaya and I'm here with Andrew Walsh and we're here to talk about our paper called Longitudinal Ultrasound Assessment of Changes in Size and Number of Incidentally Detected Gallbladder Polyps, which was just published in the AJR. Uh, so Andrew Walsh is the first author of this paper. He's currently a fellow at Stanford, but will soon be joining the faculty at the University of Alberta in Canada. And um, so we're excited to tell you about our paper. Um, so yeah, Andrew, um, what made you think about doing the study and what were the major takeaways from the paper? Um, so one of the reasons for doing this study is that in 2017, um, the European guidelines came out, um, which suggested quite a bit different follow-up for incidentally detected gallbladder polyps um, compared to other guidelines. So radiologists, uh, especially in North America, were a little bit hesitant to adopt these new guidelines because gallbladder polyps are so frequent. Um, and often people anecdotally um, have seen increases in size uh, where these polyps did not turn into gallbladder cancer. Um, and what we wanted to do with this study is look at the natural history of gallbladder polyps. It's a retrospective study looking at um, instantly uh, visualized gallbladder polyps in a hepatocellular carcinoma screening population. And we saw um, approximately 8% of them had gallbladder polyps. The reason uh, that we chose this cohort is they get frequent periodic ultrasounds um, in a similar fashion to what was recommended by the European Consensus Guidelines in 2017. Uh, so we wanted um, a cohort that would kind of simulate that follow-up. And so what did we find in the study? Uh, so what we found is that uh, frequently these instantly detected polyps change in both uh, size and number. And uh, it's actually part of the natural history of um, what we see when these patients with these polyps are followed. Um, so some patients had uh, an increase in number and size, a decrease in number and size, and some had both increase and decreases uh, over serial ultrasound follow-up. And uh, the threshold that we used um, to determine growth was two millimeters, uh, which reflects what was proposed in the uh, European guidelines. Our study uh, differs from other studies that look at um, longitudinal assessment because we have multiple time points. Uh, for each patient, um, whereas other studies often only have two or sometimes three time points. Um, so we saw that these fluctuations happen and um, uh, they occur in benign uh, gallbladder polyps. Great. So why do you think this will have impact? Um, so these uh, 2017 guidelines uh, are the newest set of guidelines. The European guidelines differ from the uh, ACR and CAR guidelines. Uh, in that they suggest uh, frequent follow-up for uh, the vast majority of gallbladder polyps, um, often following them um, at yearly intervals. Uh, and uh, what we see is that when we do this, um, many gallbladder polyps actually increase in size, 10% uh, do, and that would uh, trigger um, threshold growth for recommendation of cholecystitis. If you were to follow the European guidelines. Exactly, yeah. Right. Most polyps, gallbladder polyps, are um, benign. Most of them are cholesterol polyps. Um, of those patients who did go on a cholecystectomy, no patients actually had a gallbladder cancer. Basically, we feel that maybe two millimeters is too, maybe too conservative to trigger a cholecystectomy for more, most gallbladder polyps um, because it's such a common thing to see. What we're showing here is that uh, this is an incidental finding and uh, it's part of the natural history of um, changes of the size of uh, gallbladder polyps. Yeah, that's basically it. Um, please let us know if you have any questions. We're happy to answer any emails and we hope that you um, get something out of this paper. Thanks so much. Thank you.